And now we have our second case study from Microsoft. Uh, I'd like to bring to the stage Joyce Fernandez. He is uh, the worldwide Shape the Future leader. Basically what he does is uh, they work around the world to help governments understanding the impact of ICT on economic development through a transformation in education. So Joyce. Thank you so much. So ladies and gentlemen, it's a privilege for me being here in New York. Uh, I'm Portuguese, so it was just a short flight. And just after that introduction, uh, I want to re-level your expectations. I am not the marketing guru at Microsoft for social networking. Uh, I am not the uh, expert in any kind of tools to analyze you know, consumer behavior in social networkings. I am just a profound believer that for every single country around the world, education is going to be the most powerful weapon to develop the world, to develop countries, and to give into every single citizen a better quality of life. So that was the reason why inside Microsoft we developed the Shape the Future program. So bear with me. Empower the children, shape the future. Let me start with a small video. Shape the future. É aquilo que está nas nossas mãos. É a nossa capacidade para ajudar o desenvolvimento do mundo através da utilização das tecnologias. Há aqui três eixos fundamentais, basicamente, no raciocínio. Inclusão digital, a utilização das inovações tecnológicas e o melhoramento da educação. Ajudem-me a espalhar essa mensagem através dos governos, através dos líderes governamentais. Through Facebook, we got the message out to as many people as we could. The number of fans was rising by the thousands every single day. The response was amazing. Fans came from everywhere. India, the Philippines, Argentina. We were being followed in all four corners of the world. Each post got hundreds of likes. We made the international media online and offline. The client let us know that he was very pleased. Our goal was to prove that there is sufficient interest and support from the general public in a global scale to motivate the internal teams of Microsoft and also catch the attention of governments. And we made it. From this quite naive yet fun type font to the explosion of color in the multitude of graphic elements, even the created characters, it all came together to provide Shape the Future with a very unique and distinct presence from what is usually Microsoft. So we went for this very fun tone and this very simple language in order to fuse a childlike innocence and enthusiasm with the cause that was driving Microsoft. It went out on a limb, but we won many hearts and thousands of likes all over the world. People are talking about us. This is you. You are a leader, right? Right. And this is just the beginning. Empower the children, shape the future. To be continued. The beginning of the story. Three years ago, I was working in Portugal. I was the Microsoft public sector director, and my work there was helping the Portuguese government uh, using ICT for education. And successfully, the Portuguese government drove an, inter an interesting project that enabled every single child in Portugal in primary school to use a computer at home, at, sc at, at school, with software, with services, and that is making a huge impact in learning. So after this first project, you know, Microsoft asked me 
to put a program and to make it happen around the world, to really become more e effective in explaining governments you know, why they should do it and how they should do it to transform their education. So there was the beginning of the project, and there was this idea of creating the Shape the Future program, Empower the Children, Shape the Future, and to really help governments understanding why they should do it and how they should do it. So the first real challenge was starting with why. You know, why a government should care about education. It's, it's simple, they should care about education because it's about economic development and it's about creating jobs. So at Microsoft, our dialogue with government as a, as a, as a big company, we, it's possible for us to reach there, to speak with governments and to create the right moments for that to happen. The challenge was, what should we be doing to reach children, to reach students, to reach teachers? That was, what, that was you know, why I thought about using social networking. It was so simple like this. And social networking came in my mind as the effective way of reaching children, of reaching students and reaching teachers and helping them understand the fundamental importance of using ICT in their daily lives. So, you know, this idea, born like this, and I just had to ask, uh, I just need to ask help from, from a friend. So I met a friend, he was, you know, managing a small company, and I told him, listen, I have this idea, this is Shape the Future. I believe that we need to empower children with ICT. I want to use Facebook because I fundamentally believe that social networking is the best way to connect with children to start, I would say, a great revolution. So help me creating the most effective way to make it happen. And I, I want you to know Pedro Janela. Pedro, can you stand up, please? So this gentleman, you know, made this happen. So this gentleman helped me making social networking becoming more and more effective in the beautiful way that you saw, an effective way of reaching out successfully for children around the world. Now we are, we are moving in these directions after three years more than 10 countries around the world and 10 and 20 million children are connected to technology and they are improving their results, they are improving their scores, and those countries are progressing. So I would like to show you a small video that will show to you what is, what is, what's happening in Portugal, in Argentina, in Turkey, and in UK, where those countries are using ICT and where we are using social networking to make an impact in helping all those people to understand how important it is betting on a better education. Can we move into the second video, please? Oh, I'd like to be a teacher. Eu gosto de computadores porque uh, aprendemos a fazer coisas novas. Porque é mais divertido. É um, é um tipo de ensino muito mais interessante para mim e, e, e para os meus alunos. Acho que sem dúvida que, sem dúvida que é.
Habían avisado, habían dicho que nos iban a traer la compu, que nos iban a dar uno para cada uno. Y la verdad que me gustó mucho eso. Estaba con la emoción de que llegue el día y nos entreguen la compu. Poder ayudarlos a tener un pensamiento crítico eh, es más que emocionante. Es una tarea que uno eligió. Yo elegí, elegí estar acá. La verdad que para mí es todo un desafío estar en, en la dirección de, de una escuela. Y es todo un desafío ser militante y es todo un desafío ser ciudadano. Y más que todo es todo un desafío ser padre. Chicos que nos han contado con lujo de detalles que la familia tiene su primera foto por acción de la computadora. Estas son cosas que no se hubiesen podido hecho, hacer perdón, sin, sin un aporte tan sustantivo como es una máquina conectada con la escuela ¿no? y con la casa. Evet, bu projedeki esin kaynağımız tabi Kocaeli Büyükşehir Belediye Başkanı olarak bu kentte yetişen çocukların tümünün bilgisayar sahibi olmasını istiyoruz. Önümüzdeki 10 yılda tüm Kocaeli'deki çocukların bilgisayar teknolojisiyle tanışmış olarak yetişmesini hedefledik. I was really pleased to be the minister in England responsible for introducing the home access program because what we wanted to do at the time was to end the digital divide between uh, children from richer homes who could afford to be online at home as well as at school and those who couldn't. Technology has helped me with my schoolwork um, by helping me do more than I'd normally do without my computer and to go deeper with my homework as well so I can make it better. that education is preparation for, for adult life. And adult life will be a digital world. And these children need to be prepared properly to play a full part in that digital world of tomorrow. Uh, so the evidence showed it works. And now I'm just really proud that we managed to get half a million children online as a result of the Home Access Program. Uh, it's a fantastic investment for all of our future. about what is happening around the world. You know, India, China, Japan, Vietnam, Egypt, Tunisia, Morocco, everywhere, every single country around the world is thinking about the need to transform education. It's not giving computers or software, don't get me wrong. It's transforming education and taking full power of ICT to make it impactful. Now, why I was so happy to see and to meet and to understand social bakers, okay? Social bakers for me in this journey, it was like, for those who are familiar with flying, it was like flying with instruments, okay? Because if we try to understand social networking, if we try to use social networking to speak with our customers, to engage with our customers, and to really get an impact, we need instruments in our flying machine. So with social bakers, I'm happy. I fly without instruments, and I know that I will land safe on my strategy, and I will be able of communicating effectively with all my audiences around the world. Now, Shape the Future is not only Microsoft. Shape the Future, for me, it's a movement. So I will welcome you all in this room 
to join this movement and to really help me and Microsoft and social bakers and Facebook to give a better tomorrow for all the children in this world. Thank you very much, Joyce F. at Microsoft.com. Thank you so much. And once again, we're going to move on to any questions you have. But before you start, since we are engaging here and connecting each other with knowledge and other people, I'm going to ask that everybody that asks a question, if you can please introduce yourself and say your name and your company before you ask your question, because then you can engage with each other and maybe tweet each other as well. Who wants to start? You guys are always shy in the beginning. There we go. Micro Wait, the microphone's on the, on the way to you. Hi, my name is Jose Sevilla from Mexico City. And I would really, I work at Dingbit, a social media agency. And I would really like to know how can we become a part of, of this project? Jose, muy fácil, eh? <laughs> <laughs> now that's the advantage of being Portuguese. You try, you can sing and dance with, <laughs> with some languages. Uh, speak with Microsoft in Mexico. Speak with, I give you the name, Ariel Pacheca. Speak with him. And with a local sub, you will get the best way of engaging in this program and helping Microsoft in Mexico become, becoming more successful using social networking for the Shape the Future program. CC me, Joyce F. I'm always, I will be always in your heart as well. Next one. That was very easy. See, you're already doing business together now. That's the idea. Yeah. Hello, sir. Hi, uh, my name is Rodrigo. I'm from Brazil. Uh, yeah, neighbors. Hola. Hola. And uh, uh, right now I'm working for Wonderman New York as an apprentice. Uh, my question is, um, this is, looks for me, it's a really social business and you want to engage a lot of children around the world. So uh, my question is how you like want to engage all of them, even though there's a lot of children that they don't have access at all to internet or computers. So what's your plan to do that? OK, great question. Thank you so much. Now, this is something that it's not Microsoft solving the pro problem. It's not Facebook. Uh, it's not a telco company. It's a coalition. It's a coalition of companies that will get together. And with government in Brazil, we'll create the needed conditions to allow that every single child will have access into education. If you look into the Millennium Development Goals, Ban Ki-moon just launched an initiative to help speed up the, uh, the, to reach the Millennium Goals. Education First, it's the name of that initiative. And under that initiative, you have a commitment, a commitment made by the industry around the world under the name Millennium at Edu. So Millennium at Edu, it's a commitment that a group of companies, private companies, they made to the United Nations in order to help countries getting access into technology into an, what we call an affordable price. So how to make it happen? Let's take Brazil. Now in Brazil, we will be able of working with you, and we are doing it today, identifying the right stakeholders in conjunction with government, bring telcos, bring publishers, bring NGOs, bring development banks, bring whomever will be able to make a strong bet in developing that country through education. And you will be amazed and surprised with the number of people that will support this type of project. So, you have all the ingredients to make a successful project in your country. I'm, I'm following Brazil very close by, you know, by, obvious, by, by obvious reasons, but you know, feel free to connect and we will, uh, we will be sure that we will be engaging with you and with the right partners in Brazil 
to take shape the future strongly into that beautiful country. Thank you. One last question down here. I have a, I have a quick question um, following up his question. I'm Lucio Meneses. I work for Young and Rubicum here in New York. And I was wondering, what about for those third world countries who do not have these wonderful organizations to even take the first step to helping engage? What solutions do you have there? Like, for example, Bolivia. That was exactly why we did that commitment with United Nations. So United Nations and the initiative of Ban Ki-moon, it was exactly to call on private companies to help countries in Africa or some countries in Latin or some countries in Middle East where you are not getting what is basic. Imagine education. Let's not even talk about technology. There are children who are not going to school in certain countries. So what we do, that we work together with development banks, we work together with the United Nations, we work together with governments, and we maximize our strength to help those countries developing. And that's a big, big, big challenge. I'm not telling that we have, you know, a recipe for success. What I'm saying is we are trying hard with the entire industry and governments making the availability of education through ICT a reality today. And we will, we will welcome all the help that we can get. I just want to add, if I may, to that, um, what he mentioned about the UN. Uh, I'm from the Middle East, so the Arab Spring and what's going on over there is very close to my heart. One of the things that came up after the Arab Spring is not only the fact that the governments and the people understood the power of the social media, but also denying the people that kind of access became something that was discussed um, by Bai Kai Moon and the UN. And now people are starting to say stuff like have, not having internet access is a violation of human rights. So that's just something to think about um, when you talk about the education and the new countries and how do you get the access there. That is something that the governments and, and other companies are looking to do just to bring them forward and let them have the same rights that everybody else does so they can learn and engage and have their voice. Thank you very much. Today, as we speak, access into internet, it's a, a universal human rights across the world. So no one, there is no government, I don't want to be <laughs> polemic or problematic, but no government has the right to take out the access to internet to any, you know, any human, human being around the world. I think on that positive note, we're going to move forward. Our uh, kind friend here is going to stay around a bit more so you can ask him private questions uh, moving forward. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you.